everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Local Creative Live. Today, I wanted to talk to you about Squarespace SEO myths, what's true, what's false, what you need to worry about if you have a Squarespace site or if you're thinking about switching to Squarespace. As you probably know, I am a huge Squarespace fan. I absolutely love Squarespace. I've been using them for years since like Squarespace five or four, way back when. Um, and I've used WordPress too. I love WordPress. Uh, I, I was actually started as a WordPress developer. That's where I got my start in the WordPress world. I'm a total nerd. I can write PHP to some extent. Um, totally can do everything HTML, CSS related. Like I can do all of that. But I am also a very design focused person. I like to use apps that look good and feel good and are easy to use and make sense for people with creative brains like myself. So Squarespace really filled a void there because I can do some of the backend stuff if I need to, but most of what I wanna do on a website can be done visually with dragging and dropping and moving things around. And it's really easy for me to take my creative visions and bring them to life into and turn them into an actual live website. So again, I really I really love Squarespace. I've been using them for years, but I get a ton of questions about is Squarespace good for SEO? Is Squarespace better than WordPress for SEO or worse than WordPress for SEO? And I wanted to talk about a few different myths and things that I um, hear all the time. So one of the big ones that I hear is Squarespace doesn't have a plugin. There's no SEO plugin or SEO add-on for Squarespace. Uh, and you might think, okay, this is, this is one of the reasons that Squarespace isn't gonna be great for SEO. This is one of the things that Squarespace needs to be SEO friendly, but this is actually one of Squarespace's greatest strengths is the fact that they don't have any plugins or add-ons. Squarespace is an out of the box platform. It's everything in one. It's your hosting, it's your website, everything in one. And that gives you a huge advantage from a security standpoint because you're not adding all of this um, custom third-party content to your site, whether you can verify whether it works, whether it doesn't work, whether you're gonna get a security breach through one of those third-party plugins. So it's a very secure platform, which means you're much less likely to get hacked, but it also means that they've built in most of that core functionality in there for you. So you have the ability to make all the changes. You have the ability to edit all the fields that are gonna be important for SEO within your web website. Some examples of that are your page title, your meta descriptions, or your SEO description as Squarespace calls it. You're able to change your file names, you're able to add alt text, you're able to structure your page content in a way that makes sense for SEO by adding different headings and different paragraph text. So you have all the different things that you need in a website to make it SEO friendly. You just have to know where to look and where to actually put that content. And that's why next week, if you guys haven't signed up already, I am running the SEO client attraction video series to show you how to structure your content, to show you how to structure your website, to make it as SEO friendly as possible. Again, if you haven't signed up yet, there's a link around this post, or, or you can go to localcreative.co forward slash series. But again, there should be a link here, so just click it and sign up if you haven't already. We kick things off on Monday. I'm super excited and I can't wait. So that's the number one thing, is just to know where those different fields are so that you can put the right content in the right places and that you're making sure you're structuring your content in the right way. One of my other pet peeves with Squarespace, and this isn't really to do with Squarespace, it's more about how people use Squarespace, are the actual templates that they give you, the templates out of the box that they recommend that you use. The templates that Squarespace offers, while they can be beautifully designed, they're really simple and modern and clean, and there's a lot of bonuses there, right? Like we want some of those things in our website designs. But at the same time, if your website doesn't have any content on it, doesn't have any written text content on it, Google's not gonna know what your site is about. Your site is very unlikely to rank well. So if you are using an out-of-the-box template and you just sort of copied and pasted or put your content into the existing template content, you're probably lacking some serious content on your site and that's gonna be hurting your rankings. So it's not to say you can't add more content and you can't shift things around and redesign your site in a way that's going to impress Google, but it just means that if you are using some of their out of the box templates, you wanna double check the template that you're using or even try to customize it. Any of the templates are customizable. So you can always make 
any whatever template you chose already, you could uh, you can always make that template more SEO friendly just by adding more content in creative ways. But I do need to make sure that you are actually adding content and you're not just leaving it as is. Another thing I see is image only pages, like image only home pages, or using cover pages if you're using Squarespace Seven. The newer version does not have cover pages because they're kind of built in. But if you're using a cover page or a page that just has photos on it, that page is not likely to rank very well, especially if it's your home page. You are wasting a huge opportunity to increase your rankings. So make sure that you are choosing a template from the start that's going to be more SEO friendly, looking for templates that have more content, more text visible on the page itself. And then if you didn't choose one of those templates, or even if you did, just make sure that you're making it your own, that you're adding your own content, that you're improving that content and making sure that Google knows what your site's about and knows what kind of keywords that you are trying to be ranking for. So they're kind of the big things to think about as you're getting started with Squarespace. Another thing is, um, page speed, right? So your website is going to, there's going to be slower sites. There's going to be faster sites. I have seen some WordPress sites that load like a snail. They are super, super slow. You can also optimize your WordPress sites to rank really fast. The same is true with Squarespace. And I'm not going to argue with you that the fastest WordPress site would probably be faster than the fastest Squarespace site. But at the end of the day, as long as your site is loading relatively quickly, as long as you've done a good job optimizing your image sizes, making sure that your pages aren't too long. If you're in Squarespace 7.1, they've even added some like lazy loading kind of functionality onto your site to help it load faster. So as long as your site is loading relatively quickly on desktop, as well as on mobile, if you're using, um, like if somebody were on data and not Wi-Fi, as long as they're able to load your site relatively quickly, as in under three seconds, and ideally around 1.5 seconds or faster, you shouldn't see any problems when it comes to SEO and you should see your site ranking pretty well, or at least not being docked any rankings based off of how fast your site is loading. I was talking to someone the other day, and it's funny that even some of the biggest businesses out there have really slow ranking sites. So if you're doing the best you can to make your site rank faster by, again, optimizing your images, making sure that your content is structured properly and that you've got um, your overall page size isn't too large, you're going to be ahead of the game for the most part. So just take that into consideration when you're building your Squarespace site. The last thing I want to mention today is that the best platform for SEO, the best platform to grow and build your business is going to be the one that you use, the one that you are comfortable with and the one that you are most likely to be able to get in there and make changes on your own. If you DIY'd your website or even if you hired a professional to design it for you, again, the best website platform is gonna be the one that you are going to make changes to and be comfortable editing um, most frequently. And a lot of times that's not WordPress. A lot of times WordPress really stresses us out or makes it so that, uh, you know, we don't want to go in there and make changes because we're worried we're going to break things or we're worried we're going to update something and it's going to take down our entire site. I find that with a lot of older WordPress sites that I work on with clients. It's not just to set it and forget it, right? You, once you have that WordPress site, you have to make sure you're updating WordPress, you're updating the plugins, you're keeping track of all the changes. And every time you update a plugin, there's a chance that it's gonna mess with something else on your site or break something else on your site. So you really have to be aware of that with WordPress. And that can make you wanna outsource the entire thing or not really get in there and make those changes yourself. But with Squarespace, you don't have to worry about that. Everything's kind of like an all-in-one solution. It is more set it and forget it. So you can worry less about making updates to the back end of your site and more about creating really high quality content, updating your blog, and you're comfortable enough to go in there and make those changes because it is a drag and drop interface. Again, if you guys haven't signed up already, make sure you go check out the client attraction video series that starts on Monday where we'll be talking about how to map out your site content to increase the number of new clients that are finding you through search engines like Google. The link is above me in this post or I'll put it in the description. Um, let me see if we have any questions here. If you guys are watching live, say hello. If you are watching the replay, say hello. Um, yeah, so Rob said, somebody has declined my request for SEO help because I have Squarespace and says it's not good for SEO. 
I would have to kindly disagree with that person. I would probably guess that that person is actually just not comfortable with Squarespace. Maybe they don't understand how it works. They don't understand the back end. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people are just more comfortable with WordPress, but a lot of us creatives find that Squarespace is a much easier platform to manage. You just have to know where the right settings and where the right, um, where to find the right elements in your site to make them better for SEO. And that's why uh, I actually have a signature course, Creative SEO, uh, which I've launched in the past and a lot of you are already um, students inside, but I will be launching that too as part of the client attraction video series. Uh, so if you are interested, again, sign up for the series and that's where you'll find out um, you'll get to watch all the free videos inside the series and you'll also be the first to be invited into my signature course creative seo as we kick that off for another round which i'm so so excited about so if you guys have any other questions about seo about squarespace i'm happy to answer them here i'm gonna check my notes for a minute to see if there was anything else that i wanted to chat about with you guys today um yeah i think i got everything down here yeah cool okay well Hi, again, I'm here if you have any questions. Um, Rob says, do you have any uh, package to set up our site for success? Yeah, so I actually have coaching and consulting options. I'm not doing any done for you SEO services right now. Um, I prefer to help clients who are working more from a DIY perspective, and then I'm actually helping you get everything set up so that you can take it over on your own. Because I find um, it's like the teach a man to fish thing, right? Like I would rather teach you than have to set everything up for you and then you're not able to make changes or uh, work on things going forward. I want you to really learn the things that you need to do to be most effective with search engine optimization, be most effective with editing your site, especially if you're the person who's doing that on a regular basis. Um, because you're just going to have more success in the long run if you can if you can get things set up and then do them yourself as opposed to having to call me or call somebody else every time you want to make a change or every time you want to go back in and check things. Um, yes, Korea, uh, so you're already a member, you're already a student inside that. You do not have to worry. You have access to all of that. That is just the rebranded version of um, Learn Local SEO and as well as SEO for photographers. Every couple of years, it gets a little bit of a refresh. It gets some new content added and we update things and end up changing the name this time as well. Um, this course is specifically for Squarespace for the most part. You could get something out of it if you're not a Squarespace user, but I really cater it towards Squarespace users because um, that's what I'm really passionate about. And I want to be able to give you step-by-step -step tutorials, not just the how do you do this or what do you do, but the actual step-by-step -step how to, because that's um, that's what's important at the end of the day is that you can actually take the steps. I don't want to tell you what to do. I want to show you what to do. And in order to do that, I need to pick a platform. And in this case, it's Squarespace for me and my students.